And I think it's an exciting time because neuroscience has become more on, in vogue. Right, in the last, whatever, three, five more years. Um, and similarly, we have more and more research on like MRIs, lesion studies, all that kind of thing that tells us that connects one thing to another. Uh -huh. um, so yeah, so one of the things I think that you initially reached out was about um, I've been posting a lot about the vestibular system. It's right. a, a extremely fun, frankly, I think it's fun <laughs> system to actually try to apply because it can be so quick and the results are surprising. Right. It's very quick. Um, and, and, and then you can see the yeah. difference very quickly. Uh, yeah. We do we do uh, we do we also do some very simple vestibular exercises. But of course, you, you know, you you probably do much more. So yeah. one thing that I, I heard you say on the um uh, on one of the videos that is that yeah. when you train your vestibular system, it also helps you engage the posterior chain. Yes. Yeah. Right? So, oh, yep. Yeah. How did, yeah. how did, like, how did they find out it's, it's, you know, engaging the posterior chain, not the anterior chain of the body? Like how do you? Yeah, I know this is kind of weird. So it does mm -hmm. engage both, but it's primarily, so there's a very specific pathway. Mm -hmm. So the vestibular system, uh, for people who may not know, it's our the organs deep inside our inner ear right. that regulate balance, right? Along with proprioception, you know, our sensory motor system, other things. But we have the canals inside our ears; those are filled with fluid, and then those that fluid affects tiny little hairs. Um, and similarly, people may be heard of crystals, right? People that get vertigo because the crystals are displaced. They're tiny stones that also get displaced when we move. So when our head or our head attached to our body moves, the fluid moves, the stone moves, and then the hairs understand, like the hairs move, they send signals to our brainstem that says, hey, like her, she's picking something up off the floor. Hmm. We understand the moment that I move my head, those hairs move. Right. And then that is going to send instantaneous or nearly instantaneous signals down the brainstem, down the spinal cord. In this case, very specifically and obviously to the posterior chain to turn those muscles on so I don't fall on my head. Right. So that's at its very basic level. Like that's how the mechanics of that system work. And it's reflexive. And so even if I if I were standing and I turned my head very quickly, Right. Reflexively, a lot of the musculature down my back, you know, also midline, but will will turn on um, just so I don't fall over. So it's a protective system that keeps us upright, mm. uh, among other things. And the tract that go, the primary tract that acts on spinal musculature, posterior chain, all the way down to the soles of the feet is called the, this. it's the, make sure I get this right, the lateral vestibulospinal tract. So it's actually called the vestibulospinal tract because it's a tract that is beginning from the vestibular system, right down the spinal cord or down the brain stem, then down the brain, down the spinal cord to the muscle. And it, it acts on the hamstrings, uh, calf muscles, soles of the feet, as well as glutes. Um, and so we, it's a reflexive system. It's a reflex. So they turn on when I'm trying to balance. But we can also intentionally activate that pathway to facilitate greater activity from or change the so change the tone and the function of those muscles down the back. And so I have used um, and there's some some there's some reflexes that are some vestibular exercises that are more specifically going to activate that chain. But I've used it many, many, many times if an athlete, like their glutes just aren't turning on or I muscle test in one side as strong as in the other. One of the things that we will add in and integrate into their training, okay, let's do vestibular exercises either before or during some exercise where you're going to be strengthening your glutes, right? Or doing some kind of posterior chain work. Mm. Um, and because it's a reflex, because you're going directly to the source of the thing that kind of turns the lights up on those muscles, it can be very quick. So like 20, 30 seconds um, of a drill. And then that makes a difference. Do you see a significant change in their, uh, well, posterior chain, you, you're talking about glutes. That means the power and power output. Yes. Do you, do you yes. see a significant change in that? Yeah, it can. So again, I've not done any like, 
force plate testing, but in watching, so it's partially self-reported. So a lot of these are gymnasts. Um, so if we do a vestibular exercise, and this is also turning on their reflexive stability, like that reflex that stabilizes us just naturally. Some people just have that, like any high level fast runner has a very good like reflexive midline stability. Like they don't have to do all kinds of like core work. There's just reflexive stability that's there, right? And so the sure. more that is on, the more power you're going to get from the limbs anyway. So that's one piece of it. And then the other piece is, yes, you turn on, you're actually activating those muscles more. And so they'll just come back and just say, yeah, I just kind of felt a little bit more power. Or they visibly will go fat, like it just is faster and straighter and cleaner. It doesn't look as wobbly. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So there's a noticeable difference. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I should add, like, it's, it is individual. So the drills that I demonstrate um, mostly on Instagram, like these are things that have tend to be a higher payoff for more people, but depending on your history, right, maybe you've had a series of head injuries. And so maybe your vestibular system is a little bit compromised mm -hmm. or any number of things. Like maybe I have a little bit of a visual disturbance or sort of unevenness. You may not, you may need fewer, right? You may need to regress the drill. Or you may need to do actually significantly more in order to have a similar effect. But in general, 20 to 30 seconds, most people will feel something. Mm, got it. Yeah. So so what what do you say the, the, the mechanics and the underlying mechanism behind some of the exercise, right? So I find one that's really interesting is, is you know, you have, let's say you put a finger out or a hand out mm -hmm. and, then, and then you adjust the distance between the finger and your and your eye. Oh, so it's and, coming in and out, yeah. Right, coming in and out. Like what, like, what does this really train in you? Because of course there's also the vision component to it, right? So let's yes. say, let's say if like for me, I'm, I'm nearsighted, I'm, I'm nearsighted, I was nearsighted, yeah. but now, now I'm getting old. So I can't really focus when, <laughs> when the finger is very, very close, it gets blurry. Sure. But, but yeah. what, what does this, what does this really train, training you in, in terms of the body? Yeah. Okay. So that one is a little bit less, it's more a specific uh, vision exercise, less so vestibular. But mm. those, I mean, the two systems are so intertwined that it's not like you can put a wall between one and you're doing, oh, this is just a vision exercise. This is just a vestibular exercise. Right. But that one in particular, when your eyes come together, it's convergence. Uh, and then when they come apart, it's divergence. So this, So two things are happening. One is... If you know cranial nerves, so these are nerves that primarily act on things like from your neck up, right? So cranial nerves help our muscles so we can smile. Cranial nerves innervate your tongue and your teeth so you can feel and move them. Um, they, and there are a number of cranial nerves that are dedicated to your eye muscle. So the cranial nerves that are responsible for the eye muscle that make your eyes come together those are located in the uh, midbrain or the mesencephalon. Mm -hmm. And again, through primarily through re lesion studies, we know that the midbrain, the mesencephalon is responsible for facilitating flexion. So if somebody is having a hard time bringing their arm over their head, or if someone's having a hard time like touching the floor, right? Those are both flexion. I might have them do these because it's again, brainstem, sending signals down the spinal cord, spinal cord sends signals to the muscles. And so we can change the muscles by starting at, you know, this very, very base system. Um, so that's one reason. So that could change. So if somebody, if they're a runner and they're like, when they have to, you know, on the, I'm, I don't know the exact term, but when they bring the leg through, right. And if they're not getting enough flexion act activity from that, maybe we would do a, a pencil push up and see what effect that might have on their flexor activity. Mm -hmm. um, and so then the other piece of that is whenever we do things with the eyes, there's, there's an immense coordination required. Like it's very reflexive. We don't think about it. And when we read, right, we don't think about it, but when you're doing something very specific, trying to be precise, 
right? Following something come in. So you're not looking here or there. It's a lot of activation of the cerebellum. Mm. And so the cerebellum is responsible for accuracy of movement. Again, midline stability um, for precision, error correction, and also has active, also facilitates posterior chain. And so even though I typically use the pencil push up as a flexor activity, you're also getting just because of the coordination, like you're going to get a little bit of posterior chain activity as well.